Welcome back, and I apologize for the poor video quality in advance. All right, so I've got it leveled in the driveway. That's what it looks like. The front legs are pretty much receded to the level of the top level of the receiver tube. I'll show you what I mean here. Just, just under flush from the top of the receiver tube. You don't want the tube in the last two inches of the bottom of that thing, otherwise it's not strong. It's not that much. It's not like I can put it on the side of a hill and jack it up. The driveway is a gentle incline. The goal will be find mostly level ground and then finish it off with the leveling them with the legs. Bought this crazy creek chair, stadium seat, nice and light, and I've already used it, it's very comfortable. Ah. <laughs> Bought this laptop table just off Amazon. So let's see if this works as my desk in there. I like it. This setup with the chair, and you can put it where you want and then get in and then buckle it up, which is great. And then the laptop workstation on the little table, that's great. I mean, what more do you need? If you get claustrophobic, you just go outside. Okay, it's time for the big battery build at last. I am using EVE 50E cells that I bought directly from the factory in China. I also bought cell holders for the 21700 cell size. And I have arranged the cells into a rectangular pack that is 20 in series and 28 cells in parallel, which amounts to about 137 amp hours at 72 volts or 9.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. By the way, highly recommend this battery layout configurator. I'll put the link in the description. You can put in your exact enclosure dimensions and determine the maximum battery size you can fit. I am using 0.2 millimeter by 8 millimeter wide nickel strip, pure nickel, from my man Kyle at Super EV Store in Toronto. You want to make sure it's pure nickel. You can do two tests to find out. You can put it in salt water overnight, shouldn't rust, or you can put it on the grinding wheel and there should be no sparks. Hmm. This eight mil stuff seems so skinny. I'm using the K-Weld spot welder from Frank, or Entschuldigung, Frank in Germany. And what you see here is I'm testing different energy settings to determine what's gonna give me the best strip on strip weld. First test, 60 joules. Okay, firm pressure and go. Still pulling off a little too easily for my liking. Shouldn't be able to just twist it off that easily. We got 75 on the probe, man. That's what we're gonna go with. Seems to be holding really well. I'm using thick six gauge wire for the positive and negative leads. So I'm going to solder them onto nickel strips and then solder the nickel strip ladder onto the battery cells. You'll see what I mean. Just want to avoid putting too much heat into those cells. I'm using one of the cell holder segments here to make sure I get my spacing. Oop, a little bit of spark. That's okay. Just keep pushing down firm. So there it is, first ladder complete. Ready to solder on the big heavy gauge wire. I'll start by soldering on these pads and then I'll solder the wire onto the pads and then put more solder into the wire. My welder soldering gun only gets up to 800 Fahrenheit and with the six gauge wire, it really, you know, I could use double that probably to get the heat in properly. So I'm gonna have to attack it from a few different angles. And from experience, this worked well in the past. So we'll start with the positive lead and we use a lot of flux and just start by almost like tack welding. I'm gonna tack solder on the wire in little bits and then I'm gonna go back over it, strengthen it. I'm using my utility knife to press down the wire while I use my iron to solder it in place. With that finished, I'll use my contact cleaner spray just to give it a little clean here. And check the fitment on the battery. Looks good. This time I'm testing my energy settings directly on the cell. I wanna make sure I get this right. I'm gonna test it for the first layer right onto the cell and then the second layer 
slightly higher joules on the K-Weld. I'm doing my series connections before my parallel connections because the series connections need to be really strong. Um, they're the ones that are carrying the most current. The parallel connections, the current is just the small equalizing currents between the individual cells that make up the parallel group. It's like a pot of gold. <laughs> Every half an hour or so I have to take a break because the probes get so hot that you can't hold on to them anymore. I guess I could use my welding gloves, go a little longer, but I figure it's not a bad idea to let things cool down anyways. I should also mention that I'm trimming each of the four corners on each of these nickel tabs. The main reason is concerns of the sharp corner piercing the battery casing and shorting out the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Only the top button part of the battery cell is the actual positive terminal. The entire battery casing is the negative cathode, not just the opposite face. With the series connections finished, now starting with these long strips for the parallel connections, working from the middle out to avoid pinching or rising in the strip, much like applying 3M tape and pressing from the middle out to avoid air bubbles. Flipping the battery was not as straightforward as I planned. Battery weighs about 90 pounds. Look at that. And you can see as I first tried to flip it, the cell started falling out of the cell holders. So I had to think of another way to do this. Decided to clamp the bottom rows with this piece of strapping and just screwing it into the bottom plywood plate. Yeah, seems to do the trick. Now with one side spot welded in place, I lifted it again this time, everything's okay. I'm also thinking as I go here, are the nickel strips gonna be strong enough to keep this battery together as one unit while I handle it and put it into the battery box, the convoy box on the bullet bike? Or when I hold it by the sides, is it gonna cave in in the middle or something like that? So we'll see what happens here. Well, the series connections are complete. So let's pray tell, show the voltage we expect. 70.3 divided by 20 equals 3.515. Yes! I'm just gonna put these on temporarily to create a support the heavy wire while I'm spot welding on the nickel tabs. So this is just a temporary, temporary scaffolding. Laying the battery down on that SBM solar packaging material. Here the red BMS uh, cell sensor leads have been soldered on. Put the capped on tape back on and then use that green electrical insulation paper to uh, just create some protection. And then I'm gonna fold the positive and negative leads here back over because I need the width to be as narrow as the outside edge of the cell holders so that the battery is gonna fit into the opening of my bullet convoy box. After all that freaking JB welding, one of the brackets breaks off. I just went to give this a tug. It's supposed to have 3,000 pounds per square inch of power, holding power, and it just popped right off. Piece of crap. This guy, oh, this guy wants to actually stay. No, he doesn't. If ever I were to swear, this would be one time. Look at that. Weak sauce. I'm ashamed to share the same initials with you, J.B. Weld.
was welding blind. I did what I had to do. So it ain't pretty, but hopefully it's going to be strong enough to keep my strap secure. Let's do a quick little test. It's not going anywhere. Take that JB Weld. You're not going anywhere. Looks like it's watertight. It will be. Yeah. I'm going to guide it in now. It's basically, it might fit in just like this, but it's probably going to have to be angled and maneuvered. Okay. And there's a slight chance it might not even fit, but it should. So yeah, just support it with the whole wet width of your hands. That's so much better. And then let's try this angle first. And then you're just gonna kinda don't drop it. But see if you can just kinda go. It is. You can adjust your hand position. Don't drop it. Nope. Keep supporting it. Got it. Okay, and then just slowly bring it down. Yeah. Hear any explosion sounds? Get the hell out! This will get me down to Argentina. Now, how come you didn't uh, install this on the trailer? It wouldn't work with the way the bike was set up. Um, if I put the battery in the trailer, the weight distribution would be too much skewed in the trailer. Understood. So, okay. by carrying the battery in the front, my weight plus the bike and the battery is roughly equivalent to the weight of the trailer. Noted. So you want your tow vehicle to be. Ideally heavier, yeah, yeah, or at least as heavy, yeah, yeah. So that's why I decided that. That's smart. Yeah. Okay. Cost-wise, how's it has it been? Like, how much uh, do you have sunk into this project? Expensive. Now? Yeah, I imagine you don't want to say, do you? Not really. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, battery is installed. Bus bar connections, initial connections are made. And I'm running one charger right now. So I'm gonna try hooking up the second satiator now and start pumping in about 10 amps. How you doing out there? You wanna go for a walk? Yeah. Okay, it's been charging overnight. Put in over 40 amp hours and Here's what the battery's looking like on the BMS. Looks really good. As you can see, the difference between high, low, and the parallel groups is negligible. Blue is the highest parallel group, red is the lowest. So I'm gonna get this packed up and then I'm gonna take it out for a ride, see how this freaking tank feels out there. I'm gonna pack the sides with the same insulation that came with the solar panels. So it's all packed in there nicely. And secure. I think each of those straps have something like a 400 pound rating. So, and then yeah, I just uh, sliced a, a cross in the foam and then just stuck these through. And that is just so I don't get any annoying rattling around while I'm doing my test ride here. I think if I turn off the discharge, since it's common port, I think I have to turn off both balance just for good measure. So now the battery is effectively disconnected by the BMS. So that should mean that when I connect the power to my phase owner controller with the capacitors, there should be no arcing. And if that's the case, then I don't need that resistor, that 30 ohm resistor I bought anyways, but let's plug it in and see. No arc. And now I can turn the battery back on via the app. Whoa, it still shot that power out pretty fast. I still feel like the inrush, even when it's connected, is strong enough to warrant a pre-charge circuit. I have to admit, it does feel a little ridiculously heavy. Is it gonna hold up? Gotta put some more air in the tires.
almost a disaster. JB Weld for the, the loss, again. Did not withstand, I hit a bump and I heard something clank in here and sure enough, this positive bus bar snapped off. This one will go soon enough. And that's very dangerous. And if there's a short, you know, I've got a huge, a huge bomb in here. Okay, time to wrap up this video until the next one. Here I'm working on the panel that's gonna go inside, the electrical panel that's gonna go inside the cyber drop at the front there. I've got a 72 to 110, 120 volt inverter. I've got my bus bars, two MPPT controllers, a DC-DC buck converter bringing 72 volts down to 12 volts, which goes into my 12 volt distribution box, which connects through fuses to my lights, my fan, um, porch light, exterior lights, etc. And then I've got those round switches to control everything just how I want to. Uh, I'll probably have some more details on this. I spent a couple days putting this together, so that'll be maybe later. Getting close now.